Hello, I'm Dare Tebers, and this is your simulator game review of Warehouse and Logistics Simulator. Have you ever seen a forklift and thought, oh, I could easily drive that? Or have you ever dreamed of a life of lifting things up and putting them back down again? I haven't, but presumably some people have. And if so, this game probably still isn't for you. The forklift trucks themselves are actually pretty nice. They operate as you'd expect and they allow all manner of forking, but it's everything else that lets this game down. And that is sort of a tragedy of forklifting proportions. The people are ghosts. They're merely set pieces that walk in front of you constantly. In addition, their animation is rote. There's the guy that walks and folds his arms. There's the guy that walks and stands still with his arms at his side. There's the chubby guy, there's the skinny guy, and there's the girl. Then they have different clothes and different skin tones, and that's about it. In addition, they often appear out of place in some levels. Here's a girl walking around without a hard hat in a factory yard where everybody else is wearing a hard hat. That doesn't seem quite right. And let's not forget exploding pallets. Okay, so the exploding pallets aren't the worst here. But they are odd nonetheless. I've never seen a pallet explode like that. I've dropped pallets before. They just don't explode. Unless you've already rigged them with some sort of explosive. I can't really speak to how they look when you do that because I've never exploded a pallet. But there you go. Warehouse and Logistics Simulator is presented as a series of challenges to advance. But what they don't tell you is that each level is open-ended. In that they keep going, giving you new tasks until you finally give up swear at the game, order a pizza and beer, eat the entire pizza, drink the entire beer, and then discover you could have stopped hours ago. Okay, you can scratch out the pizza and beer part, but still, it's the same sort of concept. You basically go into each level, you play two or three rounds, and then they, they will open up the next level to you, but they don't ever tell you that. They will just let you keep going, so you could be driving for a very long time. In each level, you have a map and a series of tasks. Drive from one spot to another with the pallet. You pick it up, you put it down. Pretty simple. As you advance in levels, the only way they really increase the difficulty, it isn't through lifting heavy objects or tight corners or anything like that. Instead, they increase the drive distance and give you the exact same amount of time in real time. Each mission is 20 minutes in real time. You can finish it faster, but their difficulty increase is simply to make it so that you drive farther. In effect, this is not forklift pick up put down simulator, it's forklift driving simulator, which is worse by a far margin. The graphics are as high res as, well, circa 1980. Well, maybe 1990. You can't even, you can barely read what you're picking up despite being in a forklift that's approaching it at a very close angle. Now, as you increase, this driving distance is created through level design that I think was designed by somebody who really wanted to design dungeons for Skyrim. Why do I have to drive around a huge building constantly just knock a hole in the wall? It's the worst designed factory ever. I cannot believe that. I mean, really, it's literally the other side of the wall. I have to drive all the way around. Yeah. Pallets also a lack physics. They have physics. They, they do sit and they do slide and they don't slide like farming simulator bales. But that doesn't mean that they actually act properly. In fact, when they're on the forks, chances are you're going to have experiences like this where they don't particularly behave appropriate. They slide around a lot on the forks. You don't really have true speed control in the forklift, which makes this worse because you go ahead and have to take a turn, well, you have no way to slow down. It's not like Farm Sim where you can press one, two, three, four to get a preset speed percentage. You just have to constantly tap the W key to slowly speed up. But this becomes problematic in that some of these forklifts have a very slow acceleration, and then the others, when you turn really sharp, they slow down to no speed at all creating a constant condition of having to figure out exactly how to drive so that the, the pallets don't go jumping off your forklift. Now, if you do it improperly, what happens? Well, the pallet tips off the front of the fork and explodes 
and dies. And you lose 500 points and you have to go all the way back to the start to get that same pallet and bring it all the way back. And at that point, you just quit. Or I just quit because really the game has very little replayability. Your game modes are to play the, uh, I don't want to call it storyline, but unlock the forklift mission. There's time trials, which are exactly what they sound like. And then there's free play. Kill me now. I don't care about free playing forklifts. Height considerations? No, we don't have height considerations. We're in a forklift that actually has an, a uh, multi-piece lift, and yet we drive into a trailer that is not, I don't believe, nearly tall enough for this forklift. How about them apples? Ah, we don't need a roof on that trailer. To get an idea of a simulator game that does the concept of challenges correctly, we'd have to go to something like SCS's Scania Truck Driving Simulator, where the challenges are truly that. They are challenges, tight movements, having to be very precise. That's the kind of thing I would have expected from a forklift simulator. You want to be very precise with what you're doing, properly placed the goods, extra points for doing it all in the cab, whatever, but that's not here. And that's not what this game is. This game is a cheap game using assets that I've seen in other UIG games, because yes, this is a UIG game, repurposed over and over and over again to try to make money off people who just want a decent simulator of something that either they've thought about doing or want to experience or something like that. Unfortunately, this game should not fall in the simulator category so much as it should go over kind of the arcade-ish. That, that's probably unfair to this game, honestly. This game is closer to a simulator than Tow Truck Simulator. Just saying. Anybody see that blood back there? It's got to be blood. It looks like blood. Somebody got killed here in this uh, factory. That's not very good. Somebody needs to call uh, Health and Safety or the German equivalent. And I will give credit where it's due. This is one of the most stable UIG games out there. Now, that's not saying a lot, but that is saying the truth, which is that the game is relatively stable. The only time I have crashed the game has been when I have tabbed out of the game to handle something else on another screen. UIG games have a history of not liking that behavior. And whereas Tow Truck Simulator has crashed, just dead crashed, I have not had that happen to Warehouse and Logistics Simulator. Granted, I have not played nearly as much Warehouse and Logistics Simulator because I will almost guarantee you that unless you have a very, 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 very long attention span, you're not going to last long because it is grindingly boring. MMOs that have that paywall grinding thing going on feel less grindy than this. That's how bad it really is. I'm all for simulating any job out there, but games need to have a quality and a passion like Scania Truck Driving Simulator or Euro Truck Simulator 2. Warehouse and Logistics Simulator is not that game. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some things to pick up and put down. I've been Derek Tabbers. This has been your simulator game review of Warehouse and Logistics Simulator. Another don't buy it. Until next time, Happy forklifting.